Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jay. I'm going to give the others a few more minutes and then I begin. All right, while we wait a few minutes, you can try the following question.
All right, so I'll give you about five minutes and you attempt these and then we check them. I forgot to put homologous series.
All right, let's begin. Okay. All right, so it says dichloroethane can be formed. This is from January 2018. So dichloroethane can be obtained from methane. The reaction takes place in two steps. Write, write balanced chemical equations to show each step. So the reaction takes place in two steps. Right equations. So first thing, how many equations are we required to write? Two. That is correct. So how would we start? What are we going to start off with for the first equation? Methane. Good. Look at the name. So ethane, right? I have to pay careful attention. Oh, I put, oh, me put methane, sorry about that. It's dichloroethane. Yes, sorry about that. All right, so we'll start out with ethane. It is C2H6. And what will I react it with? Cl2. Right. And what will be the product? HCl and. Um, All right. We will have HCl. All right. So, so over here, if you have C2H6 and HCl is a product, it means we should have. How many hydrogens? Five. Right. So it should be C2H5. And if you start out with Cl2 and one of the chlorine is here, where will the next chlorine be? So and have... the same, the C2H5. Right. So C2H5, Cl. So let me do the display formula to make it a little bit clearer. So we have ethane. We are reacting it with chlorine, Cl2. And as you know, from last night's class, one of these chlorine will bond with hydrogen and the next chlorine will be attached to the carbon. So as the product, one of the hydrogen will be replaced with chlorine. Hence, it is C2H5Cl. So the molecular formula, C2H5Cl. All you're doing is removing a hydrogen and adding a chlorine. So that would be the first equation. For this reaction, we use UV light. So above the arrow, put, put UV light. So it won't happen without UV light. So that would be the first equation. Any one of these that you want to write. What is the name of this compound here? Or even say the machine to Chloroethane, ethane, what is We could say chloroethane as well, because in this case, we, can't, we will never have two chloroethane. So whichever carbon it is on, it will be carbon one. So if you want to say one chloroethane or chloroethane, both, is, both of them is correct. 
All right, so what will be my second equation now? What, what will I start out with for my second e equation? With my first equation, we convert ethane to chloroethane. So what am I doing in this second step? Start from chloroethane. Correct, correct. So we are going to convert chloroethane into dichloroethane. So notice in each step, we are using a new molecule of chlorine. So all you are doing, remove a hydrogen. So we will have four hydrogen in our product. Add an next chlorine to it. Right. And there a bit, dichloroethane. What else should be over here? It's, yeah. That is correct. So every time you do this reaction, you are replacing a hydrogen with, a, with chlorine. And you must get HCl. All right. So these are the two equations that you would be required to write. Remember, even in last night's class, when we convert methane to chloromethane, then chloromethane to dichloromethane, then dichloromethane to tri. So if we were converting methane to tetrachloromethane, it would be it, it would require four steps or four equations. Okay? So this is what they were asking you to do. Convert ethane to chloromethane. That is one step. And then I convert chloromethane to dichloroethane in a second step. All right? So four marks for your two equations. Everything up here, you will guess. Again, put, ye, put, in, you put your UV light above it. And next way, they could have asked it, right? They, did not, they didn't have to ask you for the two steps. They could just ask you to write an equation to show the formation of dichloroethane from ethane. They could have asked you for C2H6 plus Cl2. So in one equation, show the formation of dichloroethane from ethane. So all you would do is write, start out with an ethane plus chlorine, and as your product, you would write dichloroethane. We are showing the formation of dichloroethane from ethane in one equation. So they can ask you for one equation or as they did here, the two equations. So if they ask you for the one equation, that is when you will be required to balance the equation. So what would we need to do to balance this equation? Which element should we balance first for this type? For this type. Hydrogen. All right. All right. So we have six hydrogen here, and we have four hydrogen here. When you're balancing the hydrogen, do not balance it in the hydrocarbon. Balance it in HCl. So if you have four hydrogen here, how many more do we need in total from the HCl? Two. Yes, right. So if we need two HCl, what number should I put in front? of HCl. Two. Right, right. We have four here already, so we just need to put a two in front. Now, how many chlorine do we have on this side? One. 
Hmm? Remember, you should multiply the number in front. So two times one chlorine, that's two. And remember, you have two chlorine in dichloroethane. So you have, you have two chlorine here, and you have two chlorine here. That's a total of four. So what number should go in front of this Cl2? Two. Right. And that would be the balanced equation. Is this reaction substitution or addition? Substitution. Right, right. So remember, we said that the characters, which homologous suite, which homologous series, does addition? Alkene. Right. So alkanes do substitution, and alkene does addition. Okay. All right. So we have compound P over here. What is the functional group in compound P? Carbon to carbon, double bond. Right. All right, so to answer part one, functional group, carbon to carbon, the double bond, oh, oh, one A. What would be B? What's the, What's the the general, general. C N H two N? Before we go any further, let's answer B. What is the whole model of series? Alkene. Right. We've got an alkene. This is the functional group for the alkene and the general formula. What would be the name of the compound? One pentene. One pentene is correct. And for the displayed formula, all right, so we have the carbon. Two hydrogens attached. Then we have a double bond. Sorry, if you put pentene alone, it would be wrong. Yeah. Oh, so we didn't look at naming alkenes as it. So the only adjustment with the alkene is that you have to tell where the, the, the double bond is. And the second oh. thing, and the second thing. When you're telling where it is, so just like when you try to give the substituents the lowest number, so like two chloro, right? You the double bond, it must get the lowest number. So what you will do is just count from the end it is closer to. So you don't need to count in both directions, right hand side. Which end is the double bond closer to? The left side or the right side? Left. Right. So you just count from the left hand side. And so this carbon, this would be carbon number one. This is carbon number two. So it's between carbon one and two. So you assign the lower number. One is lower than two. So two things, you locate the double bond. The count from the end, it is closer to. It is closer to the left end. So we start counting from this end. 
This is carbon one, this is carbon two. It is between carbon one and carbon two. And so we give it the lower number of the two carbons. And that is why it is one pentene. Okay. So in terms of doing the displayed formula, notice I am separating the carbons again. So the first carbon has two hydrogens. Then we have the double bond. The next carbon, it only has one hydrogen. But I want to put it above or below, that is fine. Move to the third carbon, it has two hydrogens. Move to the fourth carbon, also has two hydrogens. <laughs> to the final carbon, Moved to the final carbon, it has three hydrogens. But one, two, three, four, five, right? That is one pentene. What would be the name of this alkene? Two pentene. Right, two pentene is correct. So the double bond is closer to the left hand side again. Right? We're going from this end. So this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three. The double bond is between carbons two and three. So we give it the lower number. So it is two pentene. Go next one. All right, so with the alkenes, you can say the two, you can put the number in front as I did here, or you can put the number between the pen. So between the, remember we said it, the name has two parts, the prefix, which represents the number of carbons and the ending. So you can do pen two in, or you can say two pen two. Okay. So either ways, it is correct. You can put the number in front, or in between the pen and the e. What is wrong with this structure on the board? This structure, something is wrong. What is it? The last carbon has five bonds. All right. That means I should remove a hydrogen. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure? Sure. No. Take off the other one. Right, right. Don't, don't. So this one at five. So remember, with the alkene, you must have one one less hydrogen than an alkene. That than an alkene carbon. In an alkene, every carbon between the two end carbons would have two hydrogens on them, and the carbon at the end will always have three. So when the double bond appears at the end, you must have one less. 
So it should have two. And the carbon in the middle now must have one less hydrogen as well. It will make it one hydrogen. Okay. So anywhere the double bond appears, it should have one less hydrogen than in an alkene. All right, what would be the name of this alkene? One butene. That's correct. So in this example, the double bond is closer to this end. So this is carbon one and this is carbon two. Again, we assign it the lower number. So it is one butene. And the last part of the question does ask us to draw the displayed formula, which we did. And then it asks for one of its isomers. So the isomer for alkene, it is similar to alkene. The alkene, it provides us with two options. So when we're doing isomers for alkenes, we have two, two ways of doing it. So I'm going to do it now. All right, so we already have one pentene. So let me draw a button back on the board. One, two, three, four, five. So again, from last night's session, if I want an isomer, what sh should I do? Take off a metal from the end and put it in the middle. All right. So I'm going to take off one of from the end. And so we're left with four carbons now in the chain. How many carbons do, do we have in the middle? Four. No. Two. Carbons. Two, right, right. In the middle, you know. So we have one here and one here. So if the double bond stays here, can we put this metal group on this carbon? Can I do this? No. No, sir. Yes. All right, because? It would have five would bonds five. instead of four. Right, that is correct. All right, so I put it on this one. All right, for this for, for naming this compound, right? How many carbons are in the longest chain? Four. All right. That's correct. So no, it's an alkene. It's an alkene with four carbons. What would we call it? Butene. All right. So butene is correct. Now where is the the, the double one? The first carbon. So it is one butene. So this is carbon one, two, three, four. What do you call a CA3 group that is not a part of the chain? Methane. Okay. Right. On which carbon do we have the methyl group? The third one. Right, right. So that is two dash methyl one butene or two methyl but one in. So whichever way you prefer to name the alkene, whether the number in front of the name or the number in between. Sir, so, at two actually. Oh, thank you. Three.
All right, so three methyl, one butene. When it comes to alkene, when it comes to alkene, the double bond gets the priority over the al, over the substituent. It's not like the alkene where you give the substituents the lowest number possible. The alkene, the double bond gets the lowest number. So you would not count from this end and try to put the methyl group. So, so you would say, this is carbon one, this is carbon two. And so the methyl group is on carbon two. You only do that for the alkene. So when it comes to alkene, alcohol, carboxylic acids, the functional groups, they are the ones that get the priority. You always give them the lowest number, which means that you count in one direction. And that's the direction in which the functional group is closer to. So whichever end the functional group is closer to, you count in that direction. So on the alkanes, you will have to count in two directions. Okay. So that's one isomer. Let us draw an X isomer. Remember, I said with the alkene, there are two options, right? Let me, let me show you why I say it's two options. Unlike the alkene, we have to keep on breaking off a carbon atom. With the alkene, moving the double bond will change the name. And once you change the name, that's an isomer. So at this point, we have three methyl, one butene. We are going to keep the four carbons, keep the methyl on this carbon here. Okay. But instead of the double bond being here, we are going to put it here. Okay. And can anybody name this compound? So one of them has five bonds. Oh, yes. Thank you for that. Because again, when I join it, we have to be careful wherever the double bond is, not to put too much hydrogens. And so what would be the name of this compound? Three methyl two butene. All right. I know why you said that. I'm going to write it and then correct it. So three methyl two butene. All right. When I look at the double bond, right? The the double bond. If you count from all right, let me ask this: Is it closer? to the left-hand side or the right-hand side? Or is it the same distance? Same distance. All right. So here's the rule. It's when the double bond is the same distance from either end, they're going to, so let me say it slowly. So in this example, right, the double bond is in the middle. So regardless of which end they come from, it will always be two butene, right? So once it's the same distance from both ends and it as a substituent, you can do it like, the, like it is an alkane, meaning because the direction they come from does not affect the position of the double bond, then you can do what you normally do for the alkane, which is if the methyl group or whichever substituent group is on it, priority. So because the double bond 
is the same distance in either direction. So, so let's look at it. So this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, that is carbon four. If you count in this direction, going across, this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, and this is carbon four. So if you realize in either direction, the double bond would be carbon two. So what you are going to do now is give the methyl group the lowest number it can get. So what is the, the lowest number that the methyl group can get? Two. 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 So for the methyl group, we are not going to use the numbers in red. If you use the number in red, it would be three. So we count from right to left. It is actually two meter, two meters. The only reason why we count in both directions is because the double bond is equal distance from both ends. So remember, normally, we count from the end, the double bond is closest. But in this end, it is in the middle. So it doesn't matter where you come from, it will stay, it will have the same number. So if that should ever happen, then you give the substituent the lowest number it can get. Just like we would do for the alkene, I mean the alkyl. Is that clear? Yes, yes. So the correct name would be two methyl two butene. All right. So when it comes to alkene, you can remove a carbon from the end, but you can also simply move the position of the double bond. Let me do that up here. So doing isomers for alkene, it's a bit easier than the alkene. Mm -hmm. due, to the, due to the fact that you can just simply move the double bond. So by putting it here, we would get two pentene. So over this one, it would be one pentene. Over here, you have two pentene. Sir. Yeah. Sir, for the um the condensed formula, it has a double bond. Right, so but the molecular form like it doesn't show. So if we're supposed to write an isomer for like pentene, can mm -hmm. when you're writing an isomer for it, can it be called pentane? Like you take out the double bond? No. All right. Let me right, hold on. Here is down here. So in this example, you had already gotten of the condensed form, right? Let's say instead of that, you had gotten C5H10. This is what you're asking first, if you get the molecular formula. Yes, sir. All right, so this molecular formula, remember, once you see this, you would know it's an alkene, right? I'm an alkene, I mean alkene. Just a second. So the general formula for alkene is CNH2N. So the molecular formula here matches the general formula of the alkene. Right, so all you have to do, since as you know it's an alkene, right? Just draw the five carbons and put the double bond anywhere you want. So when you get the molecular formula, you choose where you want to put it. It doesn't matter. 
You can put it here. Go on. Right. So, sir, when it gets like a molecular formula, um, you cannot change the functional group. You have to make isomers of the same functional group. That is correct. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so there's no way C five H ten could could become an alkene. But if you try that, so let's just do it and prove it. Because remember, you only have ten hydrogen, right? So if you, you should try to make an alkene, even like this. So we use three hydrogens already. Put three more here. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You realize that it would be two hydrogen short, right? Yes, sir. Right, set, right. So when you once it's an alkene, you only make isomers with alkene. So every compound should have the double bond. Because remember, for isomers, the definition is that the compounds they have to have this, they have to have the same molecular formula. So when anything you draw, it would have to be C5H N. So it's not just the amount of carbons, all right? The amount of hydrogen must be the same as well. The isomers, they have, this, they have the same molecular formula, but different displayed formula. So it is very important that whatever you draw adheres to the molecular formula, all right? Yes, sir. All right. Right, let's get into some reactions of alkenes now. All right, like we had said before, right? Alkenes react by addition. So just put hands. When it comes to organic compounds, the reactions occurs at the functional group. So regardless of how complex the molecule is, locate the functional group, that is where the reaction will take place. So for example, we have this alkene here. I can react it with. So in terms of alkenes, I can react alkene with hydrogen. I can react it with water, HBr, Br2, AmNO4, oxygen or combustion. Let's see if I'm leaving out anything. Hydrogenation, hydration, addition of HBr, Br2, right? So all of these can react with the alkene. As I said, the reaction takes place at the functional group. In this case, your functional group is the carbon to carbon double bond. So, and we said that alkenes react by addition. Alkenes is substitution. So if I want to add hydrogen to two butene, you are going to find the double bond, break it, right? There are two lines, one for each carbon, all right? And then you put on H2. So each carbon of the double bond always gets an atom. So if I'm adding hydrogen, I will break the double bond and add one hydrogen each. Is that clear? Yes. 
right? If I'm adding water, even though we have H2O here, in terms of the alkene, it will be like H and OH. So again, all right, let me draw a different alkene. Let's say it is propene. I'm going to label the carbons A, B, and C. This is carbon A, B, and C. Which of the two carbons must get an H and OH? Or let me answer it this way. Should carbon C get any of these, whether the hydrogen or the OH? Yes. yes. All right, should carbon B get any? Yes, sir. Right, which means that carbon A should not get any. Because carbon A, there is no double bond between A and B. So again, locate the double bond. We're going to put OH and H. So we're going to put the hydrogen, just like we're going to do with H, B are here. We are going to put the hydrogen on the carbon atom that has more hydrogen. So these are the two carbon atoms of the double bond. One of the carbons has one hydrogen. The next carbon has two hydrogens. Good. So the carbon of the double bond with more hydrogen, that is where you put this hydrogen. All right. So that is what will happen. All right. Let me draw the next alkene. Excuse me, sir. But sure. sure. Yes. Would not would that now become propanol? Oh yes. Let me remove the, the double bond. Right. So that is correct. So you can get the alkene. Sorry, you can get an alcohol from an alkene. So you have names and reagents. In today, we're just focusing on reactions. But tomorrow, like about half an hour. We're going to put all the reagents and conditions that are needed. Second, so, so for every homologo series, we put the name of the reaction, the reagents and conditions on one page. Second so of them and just stop it from there. All right, so yeah, this is, and this reaction is called hydration. So hydration means you're adding, adding water. So hydrogenation, that's adding hydrogen, hydration, you're adding water. And notice in each case, they are just breaking the double bond. By the way, just like I said, we have alcohol here. Which whole molecular series do we get when we add hydrogen to an alkene? Alkene. Alkene. That is correct. And next now, we're going to add HBr. What's the name of this alkene? Ethene. Ethene. Right. No, we're going to add HBr. And before I do ethene, let's do so as usual, we're going to break the double bond. Either hydrogen or bromine, one will come here and one will go here. 
I'm going to call this A and B funnel. Which one of them should we put the bromine atom on? A or B? The same rule applies with the H and OH. Do the same thing for H and BR. So which carbon carb should we put? Bro, bro. Is there anyone? No, you put it on the one with more with less hydrogen, less hydrogen. So when it comes to HBr, put the hydrogen on the carbon of the double bond that has more hydrogen. So this carbon of the double bond it has one hydrogen and this carbon has two hydrogen, all right? So when I add in HBr, the bromine goes on the carbon with less hydrogen and the hydrogen of hydrogen bromide goes on the carbon of the double bond with more hydrogen, all right? And there's a name, the person that came up with this is called Mar Kov. All right, so it's Mar Kovnikov's rule. But for now, we're just focusing on the reaction. Tomorrow, when we're doing the reagents and conditions, I will write out the rule. So just remember, when you're doing HBr, to put the hydrogen on the carbon of the double bond that already has more hydrogen. So this carbon here has two hydrogen and this carbon has one hydrogen. That is why the H goes on this one. If you should look at this one, both carbons has the same amount of hydrogen. This has two hydrogen and this one also has Two hydrogens. In this case, no, it does. It don't matter. You can put the bromine on any one of them, and that's because both of them are, has the same amount of hydrogens. So the rule only applies when the carbon of the double bond don't have the same amount of hydrogens. Right? So that is for H B R. Next is BR2. So you wrap the other key. BR2. Sir, what is the name of the reaction when you add HBR? Is it addition same? The addition of HBR. As in, we have a longer name for it, but we just say addition of hydrogen, addition of HBr for this, but it's hydrogenation, or to be technical. Sir, what is the IUPAT name for it? For which one? The one that you just did. Is it two bromopropane? Uh, just a second. This one down here, yes, it would be two bromo protein. Okay, sir. Amen. And this over here, this alcohol, it would be two pro panel. So the OH is on carbon two. So just like with the alkene, 
where you tell where the double bond is. But this one, we tell where the OH is. So the OH is on carbon two. So it is two propanol. Or you can say propan dash two all. Whichever you prefer. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, in all of these reactions, we are breaking the double bond and adding two things to each of the carbon atoms. The next one now is KMNO4. With KMNO4, you are going to add two OH groups. So just break the double bond and add two OH groups. So if you start out with this, and you react it with K, MnO4, we're going to break the double bond and add two OH groups. All right. And this is called oxidation. So it would decolorize the K, MnO4? That is correct. And so in, yeah, go ahead. Sir, but why add two OH to me? Because that's the actual product that is formed. So we call it a dial. So it's not, so you won't get one OH group on it. You have a thing called reaction mechanisms, but you don't start that at, until you reach K. That shows how you get all of the. So at this level, all you'll get is an equation. But when you do it at K, you'll actually see how you get two bromine atoms are the H and the OH. But for now, you just get the equation. But at K, it gets more detail in a stepwise manner how you get these products. Right? But for now, when you oxidize it, we get two OH groups and we call it a dial because it's two OH. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw an alkene in the middle and draw arrows coming off it to give each of these products again, All right? So all the, al all the reactions of alkenes, you can have it on a single page. All right. So is anybody writing at this point? All right. So you can turn to a clean sheet. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use OP for this. It's a job propene. If I react propene with Br2, it is called halogenation. The bromine. If it's liquid, the bromine is liquid. You will put two bromine atoms on it. If the bromine is aqueous. So aqu Let me just put it over you. Br2 aqueous. They will, on the question, it will say bromine water, or they will say aqueous bromine. 
So but that's whether they say bromine water or aqueous bromine, it's the same thing. Or if they say bromine solution, that is bromine dissolved in water. When it is dissolved in water, they are going to put bromine on one carbon and OH on the next one. So if it's aqueous, it's Br and OH. So that's not where the next Br go. Again, we do it. It's in the reaction mechanism. When you get to, you're going to do it in, in unit two. So what happens? Water takes part in the reaction. So this OH actually comes from H2O. They are going to love it when you're doing it in unit two. So they are going to actually see where this OH comes from and what happened to the next VR. Okay. But for now, it's we keep it simple. Br2 aqueous, we put Br on one of the carbons and OH on the next one. Once it's not aqueous, so liquid or gas, they put on the two bromine atoms. All right, so just bear that in mind in terms of the state symbol. All right. So apart from these two now, we can, again, we can add H, B, R. Let's draw next arrow. They won't need to skip your books and study different pages. Everything will be on a single page. So again, you break the double bond. Now, which of these carbons must I put the hydrogen on? The first, first one, second, or third? First. I was just waiting on you to come on. The first one. All right, look where the double bond is up here. Oh, so now, what was my question again? Where would I put the hydrogen or the bromine? Hydrogen. So the, the, hyd the hydrogen, it will have to come on the third one. So the, the second carbon here, right? How much hydrogen does it have? One. So the second carbon has one hydrogen. The third carbon has two hydrogens. When you're adding HBr, where should you put the hydrogen? You should put it on the carbon of the double bond with what? With more hydrogen. More hydrogen. All right. So the third carbon has more hydrogen than the second carbon of the carbon to carbon double bond. Hence, the hydrogen of HBr is placed on the third carbon, all right? So that's the rule. So you put the hydrogen, all right? Let me put it in red. Put it here.
I'll put the bromines here. So we did HBr, Br2, Br2. All right, let's do water. So halogenation. These two are halogenation. All right, the current name for this one, even though we just say addition of HBr, it's hydro for the hydrogen and halogenation for the bromine. So it's hydro, halogenation, because we're adding a hydrogen and a halogen. Halogenation is when we're just adding a halogen. So with the bromine, it's the same name. So this is also halogenation. The only reason why the product is changing is because in one of them, you only have bromine. But when it's aqueous, you have a mixture of bromine and water. The OH comes from the, from the water. But in terms of the name of the reaction, it's still halogenation. All right? For water, that is hydration. And so again, break the double bond, put on your OH. Put on your OH and your H. Sir, so hydroelogenation is a Topic on the reaction of alkenes. Yes. So it's addition of HBr. We don't normally say hydrogenation. We just normally say addition of HBr. But yes, it's on the alkenes. All right, so you should be able to hydrate your alkene. When you hydrate it, you'll get an alcohol. Let us look at the product as well. So if you hydrate the al if you hydrate the alkene, you'll get an alcohol. But this we don't really this name is not specific for CC, but we call it a halo alcohol because it has a halogen on it. Or a halo hydrogen, but that's okay. This one, it's a dihalide. Dihalide. Halide, because it's a halogen. So two halogen is on it. So these are the general name of the products. So you get alcohol for hydration, a halo alcohol for the, when it's aqueous bromine, right? They get a dihalide if it's liquid. And for hydrohalogenation, um, let me see if it works. with the first, with the right reagents, you can get other, one of these, right? So with organic chemistry, it's very important to know your reagents from memory. All right, so HBr, you get what we call a halo alkene or an alkyl halide. So this compound here, the general name for it is a halo alkene, or we sometimes call it alkyl halide. All right, so which reaction I'm leaving out on oh, hydrogen now? We're going to add 
hydrogen. Did I do potassium permanganate as it? No. All right, so let's do oxidation. Uh, on your notebook or in your notebooks, right here, for these two reactions here, you are going to, if you need to distinguish between an alkane and an alkene, this is the reaction that you will use because you are going to get an, a color change. So you kind of have an orange yellowish color. And more yellow, but I'm going to put orange in yellow. But what will happen is that your alkene is going to, so you can put it in two ways. The alkene will decolorize the bromine water. Right. Or you can say change it from orange in yellow to colorless. So for the bromine, you can say the alkene will decolorize it. I kind of see why you say chemistry is better than bio. Say it louder. <laughs> All right. So the alkene will decolorize bromine water. If you don't want to say decolorize, you mention the color and say change from that to colorless. All right, so, right. Good. Change. Um, You can look at this reaction on YouTube as well. And when you, and for potassium per manganate, a MnO4, same thing. You can say the alkene will decolorize it, or you can say it will change from Purple to colorless. All right. So if you are asked to distinguish between alkene and alkane, it is very easy. Two test tubes with the alkene and the alkane. I add a little bromine water or potassium per manganate. It is that easy. Right? So let's just do the hydrogen now and the KMnO4 to complete the alkenes. KMnO4, and it's acidified. So I'm going to put slash. Very good. KMnO4 slash H plus. Whenever you see slash H plus, it means it is acidified. Whenever you, on any exam paper or anywhere, once you see slash H plus, the H plus means acidified. So KMnO4 slash H plus, it is actually KMnO4 with sulfuric acid. And the acid is acting as a catalyst. So it is KMnO4 with sulfuric acid. So we just condense it and write KMnO4 slash H plus. So we are using acidified potassium per manganate. All right. Then three carbons and you put OH. Just also remember in the exam, just take your time. Because if you make mistake and put OH over here, your answer is incorrect. 
So even though you know that you should get two OH, just keep calm and ensure you put the OH at the correct position. It must go on the two carbons of the double bond. So don't get too excited that you know the answer should be two OH groups and then put them at the wrong place. Oh, so, so just because it's going to be decolorized, that mm -hmm. means it's not going to have any color. That's why the two OH will just take the place on the bond when it breaks instead of you're going to put a K or M N. Repeat that part. So I said, mm -hmm. um, just because the acidify potassium permanganate would going to be decolorized from purple to colorless. That is why the 2OH would take the place on the broken bonds in the final product. No. It's, it's, All right. The thing is these, even though it looks simple here, it's actually a stepwise process. So again, it's a reaction mechanism actually have to use and explain these because things will appear and you don't know where it comes from. Because uh, it's an yes, it's because it's an equation, it don't tell the full story. Just it's like a trailer or like a synopsis of a book. It tells you the start and the end, but it don't tell you what happens in between. So to really understand what is going on, that is where a reaction mechanism comes into play. So I could show that in step one, this happens and then so forth. And then you would actually see why we have the two OH. So it's actually a little complicated. So we leave it for K. All right. So for now, your job is to just know that when you have K MNO4, you get you will you must put two OH groups. And then one, if you pick up chemistry at the advanced level, then no, you will have to write out how these actually occur. Right? Yeah, but for now your job is simple. All right, so the last one now is H2. And that on. Oh. Let me put the name of this. This is oxidation. The final one now, I'm going to do hydrogenation. So just convert. Alkene to an alkene. All right, so these are all the reactions of alkenes that you need to know. All right, is anybody writing? All right, I'm going to clear the screen now. Oh, alkenes can also do combustion. So let's just do a next combustion equation. 
No, in terms of alkenes and alkanes, you can actually distinguish between alkenes and alkanes based on the color of their flame. But if you check but the syllabus, it mentions that we should not. So in terms of exam purposes, don't use the, if they ask you to distinguish between the alkene and the alkane, do not use the color of the flame, all right? Use the bromine water or the potassium per manganese. All right. So even though alkenes burn with a clean blue flame, and the sorry, alkanes burn with a clean blue flame, and the alkenes burn with with a suit or a yellow flame, they don't want us to use that. All right. So I'm just pointing that. So it's combustion. When it's combustion, what are the products of combustion? If it's combustion, CO2 and water. And again. Sir, what, question. Yeah. Sure. How do you know if you get carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide? If they say completely burn, you would get the carbon dioxide, sir, but all right, so for example, all right, ethane is burned in excess slash a large amount of oxygen. All right, once the question is um, excess or a large amount, it will go to it will be combusted completely. It will be in the wording of the question. They will let you know if the supply of oxygen is sufficient or insufficient. So, right. so if you just said ethane is burnt in oxygen. No, it will not say that. It will have to give you a hint whether it's insufficient or, in, or sufficient. So it has to mention that it is burnt in excess oxygen in a little, in a limited amount, something, but yeah, it will give you a hint. Yes, it's ethane. Oh, all right, ethane. Oh. So as I said, in the question, they will give you a word that lets, that will allow you to know if it if the oxygen supply is sufficient or not. So in our case, right, it would say burning excess amount, a large amount sufficient. Something that will let you know it is complete from ocean. Right? If it was incomplete, you probably see inadequate. Inadequate. Limited amount. Charge supply, I don't know, something. All right. But once you see these, you will know that it will go, it will be incomplete. All right. And if you see words like these up top, you will know it will be complete. Okay. Or if they mention it that it undergoes complete combustion. So if they say it out, out right it's even better for you, all right? But they will have to give some indication that will allow you to know, all right? All right, so in terms of balancing carbon, what number goes here? Two. Right, so any number in your hydrocarbon, any number of carbon in the hydrocarbon, Put it in front. For hydrogen, divide it by two. Whatever answer you get, you put it in front of water. So four divided by two, that is two. Now for oxygen, how many oxygen do we get from CO from two CO2? Four. Right. And from two H2O. 
to right so that's a total of six so what number should i put in front of the o2 three right so three tools that is six all right If they ask you to describe a test or an experiment, this is what you will say. So you can say pour a small amount, or if you if you want to be specific, you can say pour one milliliter. You can choose to say a small amount, or you can be specific and say pour one milliliter. They want to use test tubes or a 100 ml beaker. That is okay. So you can pick one of them. However, if you are using the beaker, don't put one milliliter. Just stick with pour a small amount. Or if you're going with the beaker, you can put like 10 ml. All right. So pour a small amount of each liquid in two separate test tubes or two separate 100 ml beakers. Right. If you want to be specific with the volume, you put 10 ml. If you are using a beaker, you can put one or two mils if you are using a test tube. Right. If you want to be specific. They can give us this for the first question as it is a lab, right? Please repeat. Oh, no. For the first question, they like to give a graph. So, like rates, electrolysis, solubility. So, probably this year it's a rates graph. But we, when we do rates, we look at answering graph question. But for question one, Unless it's acid-based titration, you will get a graph. Yes, so it's either titration or a rates graph, electrolysis graph, some form of graph for question one. Outside of the graph, it would be a, a titration. But for this, it will be just it will just be a part of the questions that they ask. Right? So in the first part, you probably get compound A, compound B, which is an alkene and an alkane, and they, it will lead up to them asking you to distinguish between compound A and B. And this is where, the first thing you do, just pour out a small amount in a beaker or a test tube. And after that, you are just going to add the potassium per manganate or the Bromine water. So you can choose to add other few drops of, so you can use bromine water. Or you can use 
जिसके लिए फाइन सिंपलीफाइड पोटेशियम परमैंगनेट सम्पन एंड अदर फ्यू जब्स ऑफ ब्रोमीन वाटर और ऐसे अदर फ्यू जब्स ऑफ पोटेशियम परमैंगनेट सॉल्यूशन बोथ test tubes if you use in test tubes all right or b ka they use in b ka All right, and then after that, all I will do is is take it a little bit, and then observe. Right, and that's it. So the first thing is to describe the experiment. Second thing, state your expected observation. I'm just going to work with bromine water now. But if you choose potassium permanganate, you will say the same thing. So the alkene will decolorize with potassium permanganate solution. Well, Always you can say it, you can say well, no visible changes will be observed. With okay, or you can say it will it will remain purple. Not purple. It's yeah. Oh, permanganate. I'm using right. It will remain purple. Yes, it's oxidation. Will remain purple in the alkane. And you would have said this the same thing for bromine water. The alkene will decolorize it while it will remain yellow in the alkane or no visible changes. If you want to say no visible reaction will occur in the alkane. Yes, the KMnO4 will be reduced as in it's an oxidizing agent. All right, so you know to this carrot test, 
state the expected observations, and then a little explanation. They can say give a reason or they can just say explain your observations. So we know that alkenes are unsaturated. and much more reactive than alkenes. As a result, why is the, when we say alkenes are unsaturated, why do we use the term unsaturated? Because they have double carbon to carbon. Right. So, and they're much more reactive than alkane as a result. So because the alkenes are unsaturated, they're much more reactive. So if you use potassium per manganate, then you will say alkenes are oxidized by a MNO4, while alkanes are not. We should mention that alkanes are, unsat are saturated. The alkanes are unsaturated and much more reactive than alkanes. Move this and put which are saturated, are much more reactive than alkanes. Which are saturated. And saturated means they have carbon to carbon single bonds. If it was the bromine water we are, we are using, you would add this explanation. Alkanes react with halogens, halogens, in this case, bromine, in the presence of what? What must be present? UV present. light. That is correct. So alkanes react with halogens in the presence of UV light. While alkenes will react halogens under normal conditions. So if you should if you should add bromine water to the alkene and the alkane outside on a sunny day, both the alkane and the alkene will, will react with the bromine. They do it inside of the lab where there's no UV light present. Remember, 
when we did the equation, we put UV light. So if in the exam they mention sunlight, sunlight is still a source of UV light. So the reaction can occur in sunlight. It's just that the alkanes, they are unreactive. But if UV light is present, it will react, all right? So you just mentioned that part. The alkanes only react with it in the presence of, you can say sunlight or the UV light. So you must know to describe the test, tell what you expect to observe and offer an explanation. So I want to do more so I do. Please repeat. I want I want to tell you more so I One out of the tree. Yes, uh, the explanation. Oh yeah, man. Right. So in your in your test, if you had used K M N O four, you would work with the explanation for K M N O four. So this thing about sunlight and so forth is if you would use bromine, bromine water, right? So, okay, MnO4 alkenes are reactive and will be oxidized by K MnO4, while alkenes are unreactive and are not oxidized. That would be it. But if you use the bromine, Water now, you would mention that the alkanes only react with the bromine if sunlight or UV light is present. But the alkene will react under normal conditions. Okay. All right, let's see if we can. Run through alcohol and carboxylic acid. I want to do a little polymers. I'm going to leave polymers for tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow we do polymers. I want to do electrolysis and oxidation, but let us see. All right. So alcohols and carboxylic acid. I'm going to see if we can work a little fast paper. Is anybody writing at this point? All right, let's continue. The only answer I so much for at this level, just alkenes and alkenes. All right, so a little revision. What is the functional group for alcohol? OH. All right, and what is the what is the name of the OH group? Hydroxyl group. Right, hydroxyl. And what is the the general formula? CNH2N plus one OH. Right. So that would be an easy two marks if they ask for functional group and general formula. All right, so let's look at the uh, name in our alcohols. All right, what do you think the name of this alcohol would be? Propanol. One right. propanol. One propanol. So remember, just, just like the alkenes, you will tell where the OH group is. And also, 
you count from the end it is closer to. And also you can say propan one al. So the OH group is closer to this end. So this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. What would be the name of this alcohol? How many carbons are in this tree chain? Are in the longest? In the longest. Three. All right. So if it is three, what would be the name? Two. Two. All right. So, mm -hmm. and so two propanol. Is there anything else that we should add? Two methyl. Two, methyl. two propanol. Right. That is correct. So we have a methyl group and the second carbon. Look at the name. I left out a particular detail. What is missing? There should be a dash between the methyl and the two. Right. Two methyl, two propanol. Uh, two methyl, propan. So we don't really stress naming alcohols. It's more alkenes and alkenes. All right. So let's move to move to reactions of alcohols. This is a next, the alcohols. This is the next functional group where we get, where we have reactions with, with color changes, All right? So the first reaction I'm going to do is oxidation. And the two oxid benzene agents that we use what is the name of this one? Dichromate. Mm -hmm. So it is potassium. The dichromate. And what will be the color change when I use potassium dichromate? It will be orange to green. And the next one we use is potassium or manganate. What will be the color change? Purple to colorless. Uh -huh. Now, in terms of the products, it doesn't matter which one of them you use, you are going to get this, you are going to get the same products. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. So First in the comment says PNP to JNP. So if you prefer, if this helps you to remember it, orange to green, PNP to JNP. 
All right. So in terms of the equation now, that's Mrs. Ashman by the famous equation. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Let's start with CH3. All right. Let me do this structural formula. So you have your alcohol and we're going to convert it to a carboxylic acid. So to convert it to a carboxylic acid, remember I said that every reaction, it takes place at the functional group. So the OH is on this carbon. So all you have to do is convert this carbon here to a carboxyl group. And the carboxyl group is C, double bond O, OH. So in oxidation, you are converting the carbon with the OH group to a carboxyl group. And for our purposes, the alcohol will always be on the N carbon. But at Cape level, it don't have to be on the N carbon. But for this one, it will be at, at the CSEC level for oxidation, the OH group will be at the end. And that is how you will get the carboxyl group. And then you put back whatever is there which is CH3, all right? So for oxidation, just convert the carbon with the OH to a carboxyl group. No, it's not esterification, as it? We don't do that one. And remember now, it is acidified potassium per manganate. So, they could ask you for the equation and the color change. Ethanol, let me switch inks. Whichever alcohol you start out with, you should get the corresponding carboxylic acid. So in our example, we start with ethanol, and so we will get ethanoic acid. So whichever alcohol you start out with, you should get the corresponding carboxylic acid. And the reason for that, we are not ch changing the amount of carbons. So the number of carbons stays the same. Hence, the starting indicates the same amount of carbon. F, F. All right, so if you have C3, H7, OH. What is the what is the name of this alcohol? An alcohol with three carbons. Propanol. Right. Propanoic acid. Could be C two. Based on how we structure the general formula, C2H5COOH. So propanol becomes propanoic acid. Again, whether you use potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate, the reaction is the same. It's just the color change that will be different. So down here, the color change, it would be from orange to green. The alcohol is colorless. So only the dichromate is changing color. And for up top, when I use potassium permanganate, it will be from purple, Okay. 
Okay, don't use the acid. It won't react fast and it will stop at a brown color. So if I just add K, MNO4 only, it will, it will go from purple to brown. Right? But when you acidify it, it goes straight to colorless immediately. I think there's a reaction on it on the channel as well. Yeah, the oxidation of alcohols. It actually changed it from purple to colorless. And the dichromate, it will go from orange to like a deep blue color and then to green. All right, so for this, just remember the reagent, the product, and the color change. So alcohols oxidize to carboxylic acid. Remember for the alkene, when you hydrate the alkene, what is produced? The add water. So you add water to the alkene and you get alcohol. What do you think you will get if you remove water from the alcohol? Alkene. That is correct. So addition of water is hydration. So the removal of the water is dehydration. I'm going to do the displayed formula first so you can see how it happened. Sir, I have a question. Sure. Sir, I read that when 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 ethanol is react with acidified potassium dichromate. It produces carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, and water. So is is not that the same thing for propanol and the rest Wait. of the alcohol? Come again. When you react ethanol with potassium dichromate. Yes, sir. It produces carboxylic acid and ethanoic acid and water. All right. So the carbo the carboxylic acid is the <laughs> is the general product. Ethanoic acid is the, so the carboxylic acid that is produced is ethanoic acid. So when they say carboxylic acid, it's not carboxylic acid and ethanoic acid. So when you oxidize alcohols, you get a carboxylic acid. So that is so, what I said. Yeah, go ahead. So carbolic, carboxyl acid would be like the main name for it, but the specific carboxyl acid right. is ethanoic acid. Right. So if you notice down here, when you use propanol, you are getting propanoic acid, both of which are carboxylic acid. Just like when you hydrate an alkene, you get an alcohol. So if you hydrate ethene, you will get ethanol. If you hydrate propene, you will get propanol. So the old molecular series formed from the hydration of alkene is an alcohol. Just like now, if you are going to dehydrate the alcohol, you are going to get back an alkene. But for this alcohol, which is ethanol, you are going to get back ethene. So in dehydration, we're going to take off the OH and the hydrogen and the carbon next to it. Right? So you take off the OH and the H and put back a double bond. And you have EC. Let's go again. So that is your alcohol. Just put the condition here, but we're going to look at all of them tomorrow. So we use concentrated sulfuric acid and heat. I'm going to put all the conditions on one page. 
Right, so concentrated sulfuric acid is used as a catalyst here. We are dehydrating the alcohol. We are going to end up with alkene. As I had showed you earlier, plus H2O. So remember, you take off the OH and the H, that is water, which means the reverse is true. So the forward reaction is dehydration. So, 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 mm -hmm. so sorry, sorry. So, Moving from the alcohol to the alkyl, that is dehydration. So, so you, you have to put back the double bond. Right, because you are getting back the alkene. So if you add water to this alkene, you are going to get back the alcohol. So what would happen? You would break the double bond. Add H to oh, oh, one of them and OH to the next one. That is how you would get the alcohol. So if you take off the OH and the hydrogen, you are going to end up back with your alkene and water. Mm -hmm. So the forward reaction is dehydration reverse would be hydration. There's no color change for this one. So the next important reaction for alcohol now is esterification. So we do oxidation, dehydration, we are going to do esterification now. So let me just, is anybody writing? I'm going to, I'm going to clear. The screen. All right. So, yes. So, this is a form of um, substitution in a sense? Uh, no, it would be more elimination because you are removing. If it was substitution, you would have to take off the OH and put on something. So, it's, it's more elimination because they are just re re removing something. Uh, yeah. so it's just dealing with removal. So if you look at it, the forward is elimination and the reverse is addition. As I mentioned, alkenes do. Addition, right? So we add water to the alkene and you get the alcohol. You eliminate water from the alcohol and you get back the alkene. So it's more of an elimination reaction. All right, so esters, not esters, well, the name of the reaction is esterification. So this one now, it will involve two functional groups. When you're doing esterification, you are going to draw the carboxylic acid first. What would be the name of, of this carboxylic acid? Ethanoic. Right. So, draw your carboxylic acid first, and then you are going to draw your alcohol. All going to use methanol. Now, in esterification, right? We are, we want to join the carbon of the carboxyl group with the oxygen of the alcohol. So standing in the way is OH and H. So our goal is to join the carbon 
of the carboxyl group with the oxygen of the alcohol, preventing the joining of the carbon to the oxygen is the OH group and the H. So we need to get them out of the way. Are we clear on that so far? All right. Yes, sir. All right. So once you get them out of the way, then now the carbon is free to form a bond with the oxygen. All right. And that is what happens in esterification. So it was. Do it again. You have your carboxylic acid reacting it with alcohol. You always take the OH from the acid, all right, and remove the hydrogen from the alcohol. Again, remember the carboxylic acid, you are going to dry it first, this structure. Bear in mind not to put an extra hydrogen on this, that would be five bonds. So that's the carboxylic acid. We're going to join it now to the oxygen of the alcohol. And this is how we get our ester. We remove H2O. So you also get, you also get water as a product. And so this is your ester. We're clear on how to get it. Understand? Sir, can do another one, please. All right. For that, let us name the ester. All right. So we're using ethanoic acid and methanol. Now, when you're naming the ester, the carboxylic acid, they are going to remove the IC and change it to ATE. And for the alcohol, they are going to remove anal and change it to YL. So the carboxylic acid portion, it will be called ethanoate. So you take off the IC and replace it with ATE. And you take off the, so methanol, it becomes methyl. Now in terms of this structure, the acid comes first and the alcohol comes second. But in terms of the name, the alcohol portion will come first. So it is methyl ethanoid. All right. So in the structure, it is always the acid first. But in the name, it is the alcohol. Let us do the condensed formula for the ester. All right, so of CH3 here. The carbon with three hydrogen. Then you have a carbon with two oxygen. Then you have a CH3. 
So if you get the, if you once you get the condensed formula, right? And you see two oxygen in the middle, that's an ester. How do you move from condensed to this plane? You are going to draw a line between the two oxygen. All right? Draw a line between the two oxygen. Remember, the acid comes first in the structure, and the alcohol comes second. So over here is the acid, over here is the alcohol. So let's say you were given this ester, the condensed formula, and asked to name it. You draw a line between the two oxygens, right? The acid portion is made up of two carbons. So you know that is ether, know it. The alcohol portion is made up of one carbon. So it is methyl. The ester is methyl ethanoid. Right? All right, so you can take off this and then we try our next one. Right, is anybody writing? All right, so let's try next one. All right, I will allow you to try next. All right, try this one first and then I will work it. That's the acid. And so you have the acid and you have the alcohol. Try and do the equation up here for the formation of the ester. I will give you two minutes and then I'll work it.
All right, so let's see. Sir, um, yeah. remember when I said carbon can only bind to carbon? So the O that you put in methyl ethanoate, should it be there? Or it can do so in esterification. Oh, you mean, oh, in terms of, yes, in, yeah, ester, right? Mm -hmm. Because as you can see here, an ether coconut, that is correct. Right, so with the ester, yeah, it's an exception. So there will be an oxygen between the two carbons. All right, so let me clear this and do it on the board. All right, we're going to take a 15 minute break after this, and then we come back and work class paper until three o'clock. I'll close there. All right, so again, the draw the carboxylic acid first. Then the alcohol. Our objective is to join up this carbon with this oxygen. And so we have to remove a molecule of H2O. And once you do that, One, two, three. Right. Let's see if I can make everything whole. Double one, O. And then the oxygen of the alcohol. Right. There we have it. All right. And then if this is propanoic acid, Then this portion is propanoic. If this is ethanol, then this portion, the alcohol portion, is ethyl. And so now the name is ethyl propanoic. All right. That's right. That is what you would have done or sh oh, sir, and uh, um, the condition would be with a... Um, right, we need heat. So I'm going to use sulfuric acid as catalyst and heat. So as I said, in tomorrow's class, the first part, we are going to look at all the conditions of all the reactions and just one page so you can just add everything and look at it so whatever needs catalyst the temperature the acid we're going to do all of it on one page all right, all right so we're going to sure. take a step up here yeah sure, um for any alcohol how am i going to do i just put on the yl right right oh mm -hmm. yeah man I'll tell what, two or three. Uh, want, to do, want us to resume at 2.15 or 2.20. Two 2.20. All right. Let me just put it on the screen.
All right, let's log in. Let's see if we can just work a little past the bump and then wrap. Oh, someone had asked for the condensed formula. So I'm put on the hydrogen. All right, so starting off with a carbon, three hydrogens. We have a carbon with two hydrogens. We have a carbon with two oxygens. Then carbon with two hydrogens. Carbon with three hydrogens. So that would have been the condensed formula. And so let's continue. So from the same question with, with compound P, let me draw about compound P.
right? So we have compound P. It tells us that we react it with hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst to form compound Q. And they're asking you to draw the fully displayed formula of one isomer of compound Q. All right, so I'll give you a chance to attempt it. I'll give you two minutes to attempt it, and then we continue again. All right, All right I will write the next question in the meantime. They can attempt that. All right, so compound R reacts with hydrogen. We know that that is hydrogenation. So I'm going to draw the displayed formula. So if we add hydrogen to this, we should break the double bond. One hydrogen goes there and one hydrogen goes there. So compound Q is pentane. They are not asking for pentane. So pentane is compound Q. They say draw the fully displayed formula of one isomer of compound Q. So this is pentane. 
famous John Isomer of Pentain. So tell me the name of one Isomer of Pentain. Anybody? Um, two methyl butane. Right, right. Because from um, last night's class, we know that there are three isomers. One is pentane. And as I said, the next one is two methyl butane. Sir. Yes. Sir, is it because um it said that compound P reacts with hydrogen gas, that's why you break double bond? That is As correct. Oh. Yes, so it's a reaction of alkene. Right. So hydrogen gas is H2. So it's hydrogenation. And in hydrogenation, we convert alkene to alkene by adding the two hydrogens. So you could draw two methyl butane, or you could draw two two dimethyl propane. There are three isomers: pentane, two methyl butane, and two two dimethyl propane. So since pentane is the compound Q, you would draw this or two two dimethyl propane. All right, so that is two two per meter open. All right, so let us see what the next question says. All right, so the following diagram shows the structure of compound R. Ask for the name of compound R, but you could have asked for several other things. So first, I'm going to, so this is, these two are from the past paper, but on the next year, they could have is the arts view for the whole molecular series for compound R. So what is the whole molecular series for compound R? So this is compound R. Which whole molecular series does it belong to? Right. What is the functional group of compound R? OH. And what is the, the general formula for compound R? CNH2N plus one. OH. OH. Right, right. So now they're asking you know for the name of compound R. What is the name of compound R? How many carbons are there? Five. All right. So if it's safe. An alcohol with five carbons, what would you call it? Pentanol. Where on which carbon is the OH group? The group. The fourth one. Count from the entities closest group. The second one. Same. Right. Well, this should be CH. And so CH3, CH2, 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 
when you have carbon, the hydrogen and the OH come with So five carbons, as I tell you, it's pentanol. And they have OA counting from this end, the OH is on carbon two. So it is two pentanol. And then that said, state the conditions for dehydration of compound R. So the condition for dehydration, we use concentrated sulfuric acid and the temperature of 170 degrees Celsius. What they could have also asked for is the product of dehydration. So if you should dehydrate compound Q, right? What will be the product? All right, which home first, which home multiple of a series? will you get if you dehydrate fentanyl? Um, alkene. Alkene, right. Where will you put the double bond? Um, between the two last carbons. All right. Well, they won't penalize at this point. It can go, yeah, it can go there. So, because the OH group is here, you can put it here or here, right? One, two, three, four, five. So you can put, you, you could put it there. Or you could put it, one, two, three, four, five. You could put it here. So you could put it to the left of the OH group, are to the right. Both of them are correct. If you put it here, what is the name of this compound? Pentine. Pentine. All right. And the number? One pentine. Right. One pentine. And this would be? Um, two pentine. Right. Now, even though I'm not sure the hydrogen here, always put on your hydrogen here. Don't leave off any. That's two pentine, all right. Can I clear the screen? All right, I'll take that as a yes. Sorry, can go back, please? Let me know when you're finished. Finish. All right. This compound A.
Right, so which whole model of a series does compound A belong to? Alcohol. Right. And compound B? Carboxylic and um, acid. They could ask you to circle the whole model, I mean, the functional group. So they can ask you to write it or circle it. They didn't ask it on this question though. So I'm asking you, if they had asked you to circle the whole model series, sorry, the functional group, what would I circle on compound A? OH. Right, and what would I circle on compound B? C-O-O-H. Right. And then say, state the name of compound A. We can give the name for both A and B, right? So what is the name of compound A? It's a Right, and And compound B? Right. All right, then you should know what compound A and B react to form compounds. Yes. Compound A and B react to form compound C. All right, so can you sketch the fully displayed formula of compound C? And then it says, I identify the whole monogos series to which compounds belong. All right, I'll give you two minutes. I want to see if I can get this chapter for compound C. Even though they did not ask it on this question, I want the, the name as well. All right, so this is my additional question. I want the name of compound. Also, they could ask for the name of the reaction. In the reaction between A and B.
All right. So I'm going to start with part four. What is the whole model series for, of compound C? So it's carboxylic acid. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hold on. We have compound A is an alcohol, right? And B yes. and B is a carboxylic acid. So which what is the name of the reaction when we react alcohol with carboxylic acid? Esterification. Right. So that means compound C is an ester. So, an ester, so the compound we found is an ester. So the homologous series is ester. Mm. So did you draw, so, right, so it says sketch the fully disparate formula of compound C. Did you draw an ester for compound C? Yes, sir. And what is the name of that ester you draw? Um, ethyl propanoid. Yeah, wonderful. All right, so let's do that now. Just curious. So the first thing, if you remember, the acid comes first in the ester. So three carbons, double bond, OH. Then you have the alcohol. Of course, you would have to flip this around. So you would have H, O, P, And of course, you, you would put on bucket hydrogens. And then you take the hydrogen off of the alcohol and OH from the acid. In O. Parents, so we have our ester. Well, let me just point out that this right here, the COO, that is called the ester bond. Okay. So that's your ester bond or your ester link. The entire compound, the whole molecular series is ester. Okay. And in terms of the name now, as I know, this is ethanol. So this part is ethyl. This is propanoic acid. And so this part is propanoic. And so the name of compound C is ethyl propanoic. It's e time. Proper. Know it. And the name of the reaction is esterification. And it says two other reactions of compound A. So this one is esterification. Give me two other reactions of alcohol. Oxidation. Oxidation. D and dehydration, sir. Uh, that is, yes, dehydration is one as well. Oh, there's one I didn't do with sodium. There's actually one more with sodium. Sir. Yes. Sir, the reaction with sodium metal. 
Right. I should have showed you that one. So let me just do it here. So when you react sodium metal, it's just like with metals and acid, where you get salt and hydrogen gas. So all that will happen, the sodium, it will displace the hydrogen of the OH group. That's all. So you're taking off the hydrogen and replace it with sodium. So you get O, N, A. Okay. You can put a negative and the positive over the sodium to show the charge. Apart from this salt, and this is called sodium. Sodium. Ethoxide. Okay. Apart from this chapter, you are going to get hydrogen gas. So it's just like with acid, your metal with the alcohol, well, sodium metal, it can be any group one metal. It will be reactive enough, displace hydrogen. So they get a salt and they get the hydrogen gas. Mm -hmm. Probably about Sunday, we look at fermentation and the process of okay. So that's an next reaction of alcohol. All right, so I'm going to end it here for today. I would love to continue, but I'm actually prepared. So the first part in of tomorrow's class, I work some more past papers. And not more than an hour, we go through polymerization and ester then we need to move to electrolysis and activation. I'm not sure what time I will begin tomorrow. I will let you know in the morning. All right. So I'm going to end it here for today. Just ensure you keep practicing all right? and studying the reactions and the reagents. All right. So that's it for today. Have a good, good afternoon and tomorrow again. Is anybody writing before I close?